60% of people who buy a car make this exact mistake. I'm gonna tell you about it and how to avoid it. If you don't know, my name's Tommy. I've been in the car business most of my adult life, done sales and finance, and now I negotiate car deals. Enough about me. Let's talk about the biggest mistake you can make. 40 to 60% of people who buy a car have buyer's remorse. That means the majority of the public out there has probably bought a car and has regretted it in their lifetime. Why does this happen? There's a multitude of reasons. It could be maybe you don't like the color, maybe you don't like the trim, maybe you don't like the car itself, maybe you wanted a truck, not an SUV, maybe you wanted to, maybe you overpaid. Whatever the reason, none of that matters. What matters is is that it's 40 to 60 percent, and that needs to be changed. That needs to be changed because it is the second largest purchase we make in our life. So I'm going to tell you about it, but I'm also going to tell you how to fix it so it never happens to you again. And the first one is probably the most important: is don't get emotional when buying a car, and that is so much easier said than done. I know this person says they don't rush, they don't get emotional. That's great, but a lot of people do get emotional. This is a big decision, and when we're buying a new car, especially sometimes it's a car we've dreamed about buying our entire life. So how do we avoid Avoid getting emotional. You buy online and you do everything analytically. You don't get as emotionally attached when you're actually doing everything at home. I'll use an example that I was just talking to somebody in my comment section that was inquiring about my services and their daughter was buying a RAV4 hybrid. This is right after I made that video. It wasn't even a RAV4 hybrid. It was a normal RAV4, but it was just after I made that RAV4 video where I saved a whole bunch of money. He was asking it. He was saying, Hey, can we get my daughter involved? She wants to buy a car next week. And I was talking about it and she was only basically paying MSRP for the car, but because she went and drove that particular car and then negotiated on that car. She was emotionally attached to this one car. It doesn't matter that that one car was mass produced by millions of other people. So she got a worse deal. I not even a good deal on this car because she was emotionally attached and she couldn't step back. Even if she's saying, Hey, if you do this, you can save thousands of dollars. I even told them, Hey guys, don't even hire me. Just do me a favor. Take your quote and send it to 20 other dealerships. You'll be a You're going to beat that quote guaranteed. But again, she wouldn't even do that because she was attached to this car. Again, people get emotionally attached to vehicles. There's nothing wrong with it. Realistically, it's a big purchase. But if you go and drive a car and then go negotiate on that car, especially while at the dealership, it is going to be very hard. Salespeople are very good at getting you attached. So don't negotiate in store, negotiate at home. The second thing that emotion can cause is have you buy a car that doesn't fit a need. You know, normally when we're looking for a car, I always say there's an aha moment, a moment where you're like, oh shoot, I need to buy a vehicle. And then you go searching. And then throughout all your searching and driving at dealerships and looking at things, you sometimes lose that aha moment. You forget the reason why you're buying a car and you get distracted by fancy features or colors or options. And you say, you know what? I'm gonna buy this car instead. And then a few days later, when that problem arises again, let's just say you couldn't fit something in the back seat, you realize this doesn't fit it either. And that's why I always say you need to write down your why. You need to figure out why you're buying a car. This is one of the most pivotal things that I don't think almost anybody does. But when you have a car, when you have that aha moment, write it down. And when you have to make a decision, should I pick this car or this car? I want you to pull out that why out of your phone, on a piece of paper, whatever it is, and say, does this fit the need? The third one, and this one's pretty important, do not rush a decision. Guys, I will tell you this over and over, and I tell this to all my clients that are perspective of looking at me, I don't actually even allow people to sign up for me the day they do their consultation. I don't ever ask of that. I don't say, hey, do you wanna buy today? What I simply say is this, guys, hiring me or buying a car is a big decision, and you should have all the time in the world to think about it. I don't care if you think about it for five minutes, five hours, or five years. I want you to think about the decision you're going to be making, and make sure you really take the time to ask questions, do all the things you need to, to make your decision making sound. You want to be a hundred percent sure you're making the right decision. And if you're not, you're going to have buyer's remorse. So take your time. Do not rush this. You're about to spend 30, 40, 50, $60,000. It's okay to sleep on it. And the final decision and probably the most important decision, don't ever have your final decision be made by somebody else. There are so many times that I've heard when I talk to people and ask them about what car they want, and they say, I want a RAV4. My friend said it was great. Or I want the CRV because my friend and said it was great. That's awesome. I'm glad they like it, but they are not you. Don't let them make a decision. I've had people not even want to drive a car because they looked at their friends and said, that's the only one I need to see. And then when I go through my own needs assessment from them, they find a completely different vehicle they love. Don't buy based on other people's needs. Honestly, when I do my top five series, realistically, everybody has their different opinion. I didn't even want to do this top five series, but it's so popular and so in demand. So I'm giving you guys my opinion. That being said, I don't like the Ford Escape. If the Ford Escape is the best car for you, that's awesome. That's great. I'm never going to 
you know, undermine that or make it seem like you shouldn't be buying that car. Again, I'll talk about my opinion on it and why I wouldn't buy it. But again, my opinion is only worth what it is. I'm some random guy on TikTok. But I want to end this video here. I want you guys to thank you guys so much. I am going to be lowering the content just a little bit. I've been doing three videos a day for about three months now. And uh, as the holidays come through, uh, I want to lower that down probably to two videos. So just a heads up, over the holidays, I'll probably from now on doing two videos a day. I might still do three videos a day. I love doing these. They're so much fun. Uh, but if you guys want to see more content, let me guys know. Thank you guys so much. You guys have been awesome. I appreciate all the support. A new series is coming later tonight. I'm super excited to see it. That actually might be the third video today. We'll see. Like, follow, subscribe. Have a great day.